When, after the examinations at the end of the first term, she looked at the papers they had been set, she read some of the more vulnerable of the questions aloud with the greatest contempt. A window cleaner carries a uniform 60-pound ladder 15 feet long, at one end of which a bucket of water weighing 40 pounds is hung. At what point must he support the ladder to carry it horizontally? Where is the CG of his load? Miss Brodie looked at the paper after reading out this question as if to indicate that she could not believe her eyes. Many a time she gave the girls to understand that the solution to such problems would be quite useless to Sybil Thorndyke, Anna Pavlova, and the late Helen of Troy. But the Brodie set were on the whole still dazzled by their new subjects. It was never the same in later years when the languages of physics and chemistry, algebra and geometry, had lost their elemental strangeness and formed each an individual department of life with its own accustomed boredom and become hard work. Even Monica Douglas, who later developed such a good brain for mathematics, was plainly never so thrilled with herself as when she first subtracted X from Y and the result from A. She never afterwards looked so happy. Rose Stanley sliced a worm down the middle with the greatest absorption during her first term's biology, although in two terms' time she shuddered at the thought and had dropped the subject. Eunice Gardner discovered the Industrial Revolution, its rights and wrongs, to such an extent that the history teacher, a vegetarian communist, had high hopes of her, which were dashed within a few months, when Eunice reverted to reading novels based on the life of Mary, Queen of Scots. Sandy, whose handwriting was bad, spent hours forming the Greek characters in neat rows in her notebooks, while Jenny took the same pride in drawing scientific apparatus for her chemistry notes. Even stupid Mary MacGregor amazed herself by understanding Caesar's Gallic Wars, which as yet made no demands on her defective imagination, and the words of which were easier to her than English to spell and pronounce, until suddenly one day it appeared from an essay she had been obliged to write that she believed the document to date from the time of Samuel Pepys. And then Mary was established in the wrong again, being tortured with probing questions and generally led on to confess to the mirth-shaken world her notion that Latin and shorthand were one.